Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to show you a very very interesting practical rook end game. Uh, this game I've studied a lot and it, it was hard to play and hard to well feel well after the game but it was extremely instructive and I think you can learn a lot from this. So my opponent is uh, about 200 points lower rated at this point and he plays the Kali system. So a very modest system in which not much is going on. Uh, he wants to break the position open with e4 later on and try to go for an advantage. Now, one of the features of the Kali system is that it often resembles a Karo Khan in reverse. So once White tries e4 uh, and or black plays e5 and white takes d5. You have a sort of reversed Karo Khan with white having pawns on e3 and c3. So I played bishop to g4, which is the most active move. Pawn h3, bishop h5, castles. This has all been played before. e6, knight bd2, knight bd7, rook e1 wants to play for e4. Now you can play bishop d6, but I played bishop to e7, which is just safer because maybe e4 is coming and then you don't want to run into e5. Even though uh, the knight is pinned, sometimes you could be in trouble. c3, okay. And this is the first interesting point in the game. Uh, I obviously have to do something aggressive now. I, I could just castle, that's also okay, but I can play c5 or e5. Uh, sorry about the birds and about the neighbors, but it's so extremely hot here. I think it's uh, 35 degrees. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. It's, it's about 35 degrees now. Uh, there's a heat wave in Croatia, so it's... I don't have an air conditioner. It's really tough inside. <laughs> there's no air. The air stands still. There's no breeze or anything. And outside, it's, it's much nicer. Okay, uh, so here c5 is the move you have to look at i didn't play it i played e5 which is also okay uh, after dc5 bishop c5 b4 is the way to break out of these positions this is sort of a semi-slav in reverse and after bishop d6 e4 now if i castle he cannot play e5 because i can just take it the knight is pinned uh, he could play g4 and then e5 which isn't that good uh, but yeah, th this should be, if he plays e4, slightly better for uh, for black, but he doesn't have to play e4, he can continue with a3, and then, well, a3 and then c4, semi-slav style. But I played e5, which seemed more interesting. Now there are two options, he can play e4 or take. If he plays e4, then I simply castle, and this should be equal. I calculated this line for about 10 minutes because I didn't want to get into any trouble. So ed, ed, uh, dc, dc, cd7, cd2, bishop takes, queen takes, and obviously this is equal. It cannot get more equal than this. Uh, I have this pin on the knight, which I don't think means anything. Uh, he could play bishop c3 here and simply defend this bishop. But after e5, he played a move which gives me more chances. Obviously, my opponent is weaker than me rating-wise, so I have to win, especially because I haven't been, hadn't been having the best tournament thus far. Okay, so d5, knight e5. Uh, there's a pin here, so he, he cannot take. He played bishop e2, which is a passive move. And I played knight f3, bishop f3, and bishop to g6. And the thing is that in this position, I have something. I have the e4 square for my knight, which isn't much. But if a trade should happen, I could get my d5 pawn uh, to e4, which would give me a spearhead for an attack sometimes, and sometimes the d3 square. So there's a little something. Again, the position should be equal. He played b3, I played knight e4, uh, bishop to b2 and bishop f6 and at this point he exchanged which I was very happy to see uh, he could play rook c1 cannot play queen c2 because the, there's uh, a bishop here uh, but but rook c1 is okay uh, knight e4 is also not bad again the position is equal d4 and bishop to e2 
And here I made a mistake. Uh, I castled. I didn't want to take on d1. Uh, taking on, the, on d1 should be the best move. So if I take, he takes with the a rook, uh, and I play rook d8, and probably he should take this. Uh, so takes, king takes, rook d1, king c7, uh, gives me a more active king, and he doesn't have infiltration squares anywhere. So probably the c3 pawn is going to be a slight weakness, and it's going to be hard to, to move that pawn forward. That being said, I don't think I should have enough for a significant advantage. But I castled, which again is, is also okay. Queen c2. I played queen a5, he played c4, I took on b2, queen takes b2 and rook a d8, rook e to d1. Okay, now here I made a mistake, which, I mean, I played an anti-positional move trying to imbalance the position. So, obviously, there is no way for either side to make progress here. If nothing happens, we are going to trade rooks on the d-file, and, and it should be a draw. Uh, if we trade the rooks off, then it's a very dry position. Uh, here's the engine line, which I'm not sure I ever would have considered. So h6, uh, he should play rook d4, and here if I was intending on rook d4 to just take it. Okay, it takes, and then the idea behind h6 is to play queen g5, and if he tries to challenge me, to just continue with f5 and queen takes h takes and black should be slightly better here with this pawn advance on the king side then again i have no idea what to do with this uh, the only thing i can see is that if my f pawn moves the bishop has the g4 square uh, this is a passed pawn eventually so this doesn't seem convincing at all the engine says this is the best way to play i played c5 and c5, I think, is an interesting try, even though white should be slightly better now, because he has rook d5. <clears throat> if he doesn't play rook d5, then c5 is a good move, sort of ma making his bishop worse. But after rook d5, which I'd anticipated, I was going to take, and I did take, and c d5 and rook d8. Now, white is better here, and there's a very specific reason, which I didn't see. Uh, I thought white was slightly better because of the infiltration square on e5, which is correct. But there's a follow-up uh, concerning this square, which gives white uh, an advantage which can actually be not materialized, but he could gain a serious edge. So here he played rook d1, which is a mistake. Now the position should be equal. He should continue queen e5. And... I don't have a good move here. Uh, I was going to play queen to b6, and the problem is queen e7. Uh, trying to play rook d1 and advance, and I basically have to play queen f6 here, trying to trade. He cannot take on b7 because the rook is hanging. And after takes, takes, and rook d1 and rook d6, it's obvious that white is better because I have double f pawns, my bishop is no good, and this passed pawn is all of a sudden going to be very hard to round up. Now, of course, I could play f5 and f6 and bishop f7 and bishop to c4 and, and a6 and b5 eventually. Uh, and maybe even try to get my king into e5, but that's not going to be easy. So probably this pawn is going to be stuck here forever and white is going to be better. So that was the way to go. My opponent played rook d1 and after rook d6... There are no more ideas with queen e5, queen e7, because on queen e5 I just play queen d8. And now my position is very safe. Now I actually got what I wanted. He played bishop g4, I played king f8, why not get my king into play? Uh, bishop f5, the position is dead equal now, and queen e7. And if he trades queens, then I'm the one with the advantage, and the advantage is very significant. Why? Because my king is two squares away from attacking the pawn. He played queen f4, uh, I took on f5, queen f5 and g6, and queen f4. And here I, I, I played a very rash move, I played f5. I wanted to free up my queen, uh, I should play king g7. 
that's safer. Uh, but F5, I mean, it's not bad. It's just, it allows F3, which I saw, but I thought it was going to be okay. So EF3, GF3, King G7 now. He played King F2, and I played Queen to D8, attacking the pawn. Queen E5 check, and Queen F6. Okay, uh, trading queens, I think he has to do it now. Uh, I mean, not that I'm threatening queen to b2 or anything, but because my rook is attacked. But I could move my rook back and then try to play queen to b2. And especially if he plays, for example, queen h2, then I think I'm the one with the advantage here, because his king is completely misplaced. Eventually he's going to have to play e4 uh, or, or f4. f4 should be worse. After f4 I think I'm better. After e4 I can just take, take, and here, and... Now I can just take. <coughs> no, whoa, 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 whoa! This is not a rook. Yeah, sorry. Okay, no, I cannot take, but I can. I can play rook, uh, rook to f6. Something similar happened in the game where he played d6 and they didn't manage to take. Okay, uh, so he exchanged queens. King f6, e4, king e5, uh, king e3, and I think at this point he offered the draw. Uh, of course, I declined. I I have to play on because I have to try to win. I knew that the position was equal, so fe4, fe4, and I played rook f6. And winning ideas in this position are very hard to find. Obviously my threat is rook f4 takes and trying to catch the pawn if it advances. Uh, now here he played the losing move uh, for, for, for no reason. He just blundered, he played d6. Uh, I don't know. He, he told me after the game that he just missed rook takes d6. So, if he doesn't play it, I think the game is equal. Uh, after d6, rook d6, he played rook f1, and now this is the critical position. This is the point where I would like you to pause and try to come up with a plan for black. Uh, this is a very tough position. During the game, I just thought, okay, d6, yeah black wins and then this position came two moves later and they started thinking for a long long time this is actually not easy uh, so i can win the pawn by force if i play rook d4 because rook f4 doesn't work i, ca I can just play rook d3 and the pawn endgame is just easily winning so he cannot trade rooks so it's obvious that i can take the the e4 pawn but he is infiltr infiltrating on f7 if I do that. So, there are a couple of candidate moves here. After the game, I was staying in my friend's house with three or four former chess players who were playing at the tournament. And we all analyzed this position after my game finished. And we concluded that rook to d7 should be the best move, which may seem strange. But it's simply preventing any infiltrations. And after rook f8, you go king e6. And then whichever side uh, white attacks, you move those pawns. And then you try to come in. Now, we found some winning lines, but we must have missed something. Because eventually white, if the engine is playing, white is able to hold on. I'm not saying my opponent would have found drawing ideas. But... This basically prevents counterplay before going in for the pawns. Uh, another interesting try, which I think is gives me the best practical chances, is h5, creating a pawn majority which no longer, which can no longer be attacked uh, on the king side. And if rook f7 now, I simply go rook a6. And if we trade these two pawns. Okay, and rook c7, and rook c2, and king d3, let's say, and rook h2, takes on c5 and king f4, this should be winning. Uh, because, uh, let's say rook c7 and rook h3 check and king c4, because I have two connected passed pawns, uh, which are much quicker than his, this should be a clean win. That's very hard to see during a game, but actually playing h5 and then going for these two pawns is the way to go and that was unavoidable there was nothing white could have done about that in the game i played rook d4 which 
after long analysis by myself, I concluded that it has to be good, it cannot be bad, but I made a mistake two moves later, as you're going to see, and the engine actually confirms that. So, the only move he has in this position is rook f7, that much is clear. The only move I have is stakes. He should play king f3, that's okay. So now, uh, what do you do here? You can pause the video again. Uh, I played rook b4, and if you remember the position with h5, you will know that this is the correct move. So, after rook h4, I'm again trying to get this pawn majority going, uh, and just trying to trying to win with the two connected passed pawns. If rook takes b7, then rook h3 check, king g2, rook c3. And if he takes on a7, then I play h5. And if he play, it takes on h7, then, yeah, I can just play rook to c2 and take on a2. So this was the way to go. <coughs> but in the game, I played rook b4. He took on h7, and here I made the move that ruins the, the position completely. Rook b4 was a mistake, but I was still winning. My next move uh, is, is just uh, a draw. I played king f5, which is bad. You need to go forward with your king. Uh, king d4 actually wins, uh, and there is nothing he can do. If, king g, if rook g7, rook b6, rook c7, rook f6 check, and b5, rook a7, king c3, and obviously I'm just going to pick up these pawns and queen. It doesn't matter that the material is equal. Something like this happens, and I have two connected passed pawns. There is nothing he can do about it. I played king f5. Rook d7, king e5. Going back, I don't want to allow rook d6, or rook d5, excuse me. Uh, rook g7, rook b6, rook d7, a6, king to g4. And again, there was a way to try and win with a5, which I played later on not at this point, if h4, for example, a4, takes, check, king g5, uh, c4, black should be able to win this again, because this pawn is too far away for black to catch up with, but I played king f6, which is again passive, king f4, rook b4, check, I thought this position had to be good for me, that's why I played it, king g3, and I played b6, and again, this is a mistake. I don't really have to play b6, b6 does nothing, I need to go forward with king e5, and again, I should be able to win this. If rook g7, rook b6, and let's say h4, rook d4, and again, I'm coming in. So the key idea, which I kept missing during the game, was not trying to hold the king side with my king, and use the 3 to 2 pawn majority, which seemed logical, because if it's my king against his on the king side, that should be equal. And if it's my rook and 3 pawns against his 2 pawns on the queen side, I should win that. So, but yeah, that, that was just a, just a mistake. I don't know rook endgames well enough for this one. This was too hard for me. So, that's why I'm saying that you should hopefully learn something from this. But I played b6, rook d6 check, king g5, rook d5, here, 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 rook e6, okay, a5, rook d6, a4, b a4, rook a4, rook b6, rook a2. Okay, so I was looking at this position, thinking this should be equal, but I'm not sure, maybe I can win this. The thing is, if my king was anywhere here, It is an easily winning position. With my king on h5, it's just a draw. There is no way for me to support my pawn. Rook c6, rook c2, rook c8, rook c3, king g2, king g5, rook c7, c4, rook c8, rook c1, king g3. Now, at this point, uh, I was, well, sad that the game is going to end in a draw. There's actually a win here. And it's an easy win, which I didn't even consider. And this is probably the, the worst mistake I made in the game. So if you want, 
you can pause the video here. It's basically black to play and win. Uh, this could be an endgame study, or it's not really hard enough to be a study, it could be an endgame puzzle. I played c3 in the game, drawing the game. King f5 wins. Exactly because of exactly what I said earlier, I'm going to get my king here. Once I get my king here, I win. It's as simple as that. Now what can he do? Uh, if he plays rook c6, for example, then I go rook c3 check. His king has to go back. Oh, excuse me. No, I just go king e4. I give up the pawn. If here I I take the rook, so that doesn't work. If king e4, then probably king f2. Rook c2 check, forcing the king even farther back. And now simply g5. I can save my pawn for a move. And now c3. And my king is just going to support the pawn. For example, something like this happens and obviously a queen. <coughs> so, against king f5, let's look at the more resilient move, king f3. Now again, rook c3 check, the king is completely cut off, it has to go back. So king e2, and if king e2, I go king e4. And for example, rook c6, rook c2 check, again the king is cut off, uh, king to d1. And now simply rook to g2. And if rook c4, I go king d3, attacking the rook, attacking the... or threatening to mate the king. So, this part is very hard to see. Uh, this mate threat in combination of with attacking the rook. So it's very hard to see that he cannot take on c4 here. And if he doesn't take on c4, I'm just going to move my king into c3 and mate him or queen. In the game, as I said, I played c3, and the game ended in a draw like this. Uh, we played on for a few more moves, but this is just... My king is too far away. So, even though my opponent blundered the clean pawn for no reason, uh, it wasn't enough for me to win. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll give no more excuses. The last two and a half tournaments, I played very poorly. And I was in a bad state of mind, uh, and I still am, because I was devastated. Especially because I had a few great wins, I gained a lot of rating points a few months ago. I had that win against Fide Master Lasic and International Master Zelic, and I felt that I'm playing well. And then, recently I've been playing very poorly. So I took this... yeah, I didn't... Anyway, no excuses. I need to start playing better chess. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something from this game and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.